Hi folks, I um, hope you are all well and thank you for tuning in to uh, this uh, live video talking about five mistakes that people make when they're trying to lose weight and that includes me um, in the past and lots of lots of people that I know so you're not alone okay and we all know that weight loss can be challenging and even losing the weight is one thing, but it can be even more difficult to sustain that weight loss. And, you know, you ask yourself the question, where are we going wrong, right, that makes it all so difficult? Is it, is it all about the food or are there other factors at play here? And a wee bit of a spoiler alert, it's not always about the food. So there's nothing more frustrating than making the commitment to losing weight and making dietary changes and not losing weight. Equally frustrating is achieving your weight loss goals and gaining all your weight back again and sometimes even more. Because here's the thing like there's never been more support, more solutions, more products, more advice, uh, you know more people like me um, giving that advice and you know helping people to lose weight and yet there is still this struggle. One piece of advice I would give to you is if you are looking for someone to help you lose weight, uh, make sure that it's someone that you know, that you like and that you trust, that you've investigated them, that you just don't go willy nilly and cold turkey into this. OK, um, and by the way, of course, I do run uh, an eight week Zoom weight loss program, Happy and Healthy Weight Loss. Uh, there's only four places left for uh, the upcoming program which is starting on Thursday the 21st at 7 o'clock. But that aside, here we are, let's go. The number one mistake I find that people make whenever they're trying to lose weight is not considering your age. So not thinking about your age, okay? This is like one of the biggest mistakes I see is that many of us are still eating the same things, the same portions and the same timings in the same way we did 10 or 20 years ago. I have clients aged, say like 45 and, and up, clients across the age spectrum, but, but let, let's look at those. And they say, but nothing has changed and I'm piling on the weight. And here it is. That's why the weight has piled on, because nothing has changed. Because as we age, our nutrient needs change, okay? For a variety of reasons, for women in the menopause, um, the fact that we lose muscle mass, which means that we're not, we don't require as much energy, so we should actually be eating less. So I'll talk a wee bit more about that um, in, in one of the other uh, mistakes that I'm gonna talk about. But that's the first one, okay, that we, we don't think um, that we're different and that our nutrient needs are different whenever we're 50 or 60 from whenever we were 20 or 30. Uh, the second mistake that people can make is around food. Um, and it's there's a couple of wee mistakes just in there that I'm, that I'm going to look at. And so the second mistake would be consuming diet meals and foods and products that are kind of low fat and branded as healthy and you know, high protein this, low fat the other, and I'm not saying low fat's bad or, or high protein is bad. There's a, there's a place for all of those things. But whenever you're consuming those kind of diet meals that are promoted, particularly at you, that people are um, looking to make profit from and things like that, they're very processed foods by, by their nature because they're, they're ready meals and they're, you know, kind of trying to make it easier for you. And if they've taken one thing out, they've put something else in. They've really messed with the whole just natural um, uh, environment and the natural components of the food. And in terms of a weight loss journey, you will be more successful if you are cooking yourself. Now, there's loads of um, quick kind of uh, quick wins that you can get around that and kind of easy hacks and everything but consuming those sorts of like diet meals diet products with sweeteners and additives and highly processed doing you no favors at all and actually can make um your efforts to lose weight um harder um around food as well it's kind of this uh, number two mistake is linked in with what i was talking about in number one around your age 
because sometimes what we end up doing is we just eat, eat less of the same food that we were eating before and we think that's going to get the weight off us and it will to a certain extent but then it'll stall okay so you know there has to be um, changes both in what you eat and how you eat so number one we have to consider our age number two we have to consider the food that we are consuming the type of the food that we are consuming number three I think actually number three, four and five might not be food related. So let's see. Number three, not considering the impact of stress. And stress has a massive impact on weight loss. I do a full week on that alone in my Happy and Healthy Weight Loss program. Stress results in the release of glucose from the, from the, from the liver. Glucose i.e. sugar, okay, from the liver, to provide energy to deal with the stressor. Now, this is great if we are faced with an acute stress where we need that sugar, we need that energy, we need an immediate burst of energy, okay, so that's kind of like the stress that you would get from exercise if you're running a marathon or doing something, running away um, from, a, from a danger, anything like that. We need that immediate burst of energy. So we need that glucose that stress releases, okay? But the same mechanism occurs when we're sitting at our desk stressed, when we're driving the kids about for, from, you know, pillar to post for all their after school activities or anything like that, when we're having arguments, whenever we just get ourselves worried and stressed, just sitting there still with no need for energy. So that same mechanism occurs. The glucose is released from the liver to provide energy. We don't need that energy. The constant release of glucose into the bloodstream results in chronically high blood sugar levels above your metabolic needs, so above what your body needs to burn off. And that leads to fat storage and inflammation. And inflammation leads to more fat storage and more, that's a whole other story. Okay, so that's number three. You don't consider stress and managing your stress as part of your weight loss strategy. Number four, you don't prioritize sleep. Chronic stress and this busy lifestyle that we're all leading often leads to inadequate and impaired sleep and sleep deprivation leads to an imbalance of the hormones insulin, leptin and ghrelin. That leads to increased appetite, lack of energy, craving for sugar. Consistent sleep deprivation definitely leads to weight gain, poor blood sugar management and the development of abdominal fat in particular. So that's non-foody type things is there's your stress and your sleep. Number four, we are either overestimating or underestimating the importance of exercise. Now, exercise is important in a weight loss journey, um, it, but it has to be enjoyable and sustainable. It doesn't have to be mad, crazy gym stuff. And, um, you know, even if you have like a, a chronic illness, anything like that, there's nearly always some form of movement that you can do, even just sitting on the chair. So, important has to be enjoyable has to be sustainable and if you end up exercising with the sole aim of burning calories you're always going to overestimate the amount of calories that you burn by the way enabling you to eat um you know more or unhealthy foods then it's just not a good mindset it is a very kind of diet type mindset that has led us to the obesity crisis that, that we have um, at the minute. And it can drive a real disordered eating. So if that's why you're exercising, you kind of want to be thinking about that. And literally last night was week eight of our Happy and Healthy Weight Loss course, the final one. And we did talk about the different types of activity, why you might be active and how movement throughout the day is just as important. But exercise, let's look at it just um, in just a wee bit more detail, just for a minute. Exercise can improve insulin sensitivity 
and it can build muscular strength. Okay, so now I'm not talking about going and big, building big mad muscles or anything like that. But this insulin sensitivity and this muscular strength are massive issues for women as we age. We lose between five and 10% of our muscle mass every five to 10 years after the age of kind of, you know, 30, 40, round about then. Okay, so we're starting to lose that muscle mass. And the thing about it is that muscle that we have lost, that just did burn, 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 burn a lot of the calories that we would have been eating. So that's one of the reasons why we have to consider our age, which was the number one mistake that we were making um, whenever we're trying to lose weight. And we become more resistant to insulin as we age. And particularly again, women during the peri and menopause years, one of the it's one of the complex reasons for weight gain at this time is that whole our bodies becoming more resistant to insulin. When we're resistant to insulin, we are unable to efficiently take that glucose, that sugar, into the cells for the energy, and so it's floating around. It's not going into our cells for energy. It's floating around in our body. And consequently, it is converted to fat. And so as we try to lose weight, there are loads of those factors that we have to take into consideration. It isn't, it isn't just a case of you eating less of the same stuff that you were always eating. And, you know, whenever we're, we're talking about food, and this isn't kind of really a mistake, this is just me throwing me, me tuppence worth in in terms of the type of the food that we're eating. Yes, food is fuel and providing energy, but it's also providing information, the vitamins and the minerals that your body cells need in order to work efficiently at burning fat for you. So that's just something to think about as well. I suppose it's just a, um, a plea for you to think about the quality of the food that you're eating. Um, I think I've done four mistakes. Mistake number five is thinking that one size fits all. Linked in a wee bit with that whole age thing, right? You know, but I, as you can see from the, the previous points, one size is never going to fit all in terms of your weight loss journey. We are all different. Even those of us who are the same age, we're all different, right? And we have different sleep habits, we have different levels of stress, we have different ways of managing that stress, and that's the important thing. We have different mobility levels, we have different exercise regimes, the exercises that we like or don't like, and we have different foods that we eat or that we don't eat. And then on top of that, we're all different ages and at different stages of life. So one size is never going to fit all. And that's the thing that I try to impress upon clients in the Happy and Healthy Weight Loss course is, here's the information, here's the way that we can do it, tailor that for you, tailor that for you, what about this for you? Do you know what I mean? It's very, my, my approach is very unique and it's very intimate and individual, even though it is a group program, but it's because it's a small group program that we're able to make it that wee bit more tailored. So if you're stuck in a rut, Take the time to assess the whole picture, not just your food intake. It's your lifestyle situation, your lifestyle choices, and how our body, how your body is processing that food. And you can check out my Happy and Healthy Weight Loss um, program on my website, www.janistracynutrition.com. I think there's about four places left. Um, so you can pop, start on Thursday night, Thursday the 21st, 7 o'clock, uh, pop on the website and see if you can bag yourself one of those and let's get you on a happy and healthy weight loss journey. So I hope you have a fantastic day and just think to yourself, what can you do today to make your tomorrow that wee bit better? Bye for now.